In this picture, I have identified the optimal bundle at some given prices and income. Let's identify the optimal bundle for a higher level of income. Right here, both goods are normal in this example. Here I have marked the third optimal bundle at an even higher level of income. I could keep on doing the same thing, identifying optimal bundles for various levels of income. If I trace out all the optimal bundles, I will get a curve called the income offer curve drawn in red. The income offer curve is the collection of all optimal bundles x1, x2, where we let m vary between zero and some number, keeping prices fixed. If both goods are normal, then the income offer curve will slope upwards. Let's do an example finding an income offer curve. My utility function is given by x1, x2, p1 is equal to 1, and p2 is equal to 2. This is a Cobb Douglas utility function with exponents 1 and 1. Therefore, the optimal choice is given by x1 equal to m divided by 2p1, which is m over 2. The optimal choice of x2 is m divided by 2p2, which is m over 4. As you can see, the optimal choice of x2 is always half of the optimal choice of x1. Therefore, the income offer curve will be a straight line through the origin with slope one half. If we create a graph with the optimal demand of good one on the x-axis and income on the y-axis for some given prices, then we get what is called an angle curve. The angle curve will slope upwards if the good is normal and it will slope downwards if the good is inferior. Normal goods are further categorized into luxury goods and necessary goods. So good one is a normal good. X1 as a function of P1, P2 and M is the demand function for good one and it's increasing in M. My total expenditure on good one is this amount multiplied by P1. If I divide P1 X1 with M, I get the proportion of income spent on good one. If it is the case that the proportion spent on good one is increasing in M, then we say that good one is a luxury good. If the proportion is decreasing in income, we say that it is a necessary good. Consider for example food and travel. Let's say that your income is doubled. It's likely that you would now spend more on food, making food a normal good. However, it is unlikely that your spending on food will double, making food a necessary good. On the other hand, with an income that is twice as high, you're more easily able to satisfy your basic needs and you may end up spending more than twice as much on traveling as you did before. Traveling becomes a luxury good. Let's do some examples. In my first example of a luxury versus necessary good, I will look at Cobb Douglas preferences. I have a utility function u equal to x1 to the a times x2 to the b. The demand function for good one is given by a over a plus b times m over p1. If you multiply this by p1 and divide by m, you see that the proportion of income spent on good one is a over a plus b. The proportion of income spent on good one will not vary with M, so good one is neither luxury nor necessary. The same thing will be true for good two in this example. We will spend a proportion B over A plus B on good two. This is always the case with Cobb Douglas preferences. In my next example, X1 is 8M minus M squared divided by 10P1, valid only for levels of income between 0 and 8. Multiply by P1 and divide by M, and you find that the proportion of income spent on good one is 0.8 minus 0.1 M, which is decreasing in M, making good one a necessary good. Since the proportion of income spent on good one decreases with M, the proportion of income spent on good two must increase with M, and good two must be a luxury good. In our example, the proportion spent on good 2 is 1 minus the proportion spent on good 1, which is 0.2 plus 0.1 M, and we see that good 2 is indeed a luxury good.